Kia ora Aratauhi Whānau, we're really excited to announce that Takiwa is live. Our new data visualisation tool lets you find out cool information about young people and services in Aotearoa. Check out this presentation to find out more. Takiwa is one of the three pole of our digital strategy, which is to ensure that young people in Aotearoa are thriving as a result of a strong data literate youth development sector whose work is shaped by the big picture and supported by good information. Alongside Takiwa, we're developing a self-review tool for organisations and we'll be developing a youth development index. This index will be a curated set of indicators that helps us map how young people are doing over time and also how organisations are supporting them. We'll be working with you, the sector and young people to make sure that we find indicators that are important to all of us. Takiwa is exciting for lots of reasons. It allows us to look at complex data in simple ways. It provides truly local and regional information. It maps our sector and what we do. It shows us where young people are thriving and where they are not. And it opens up conversations for connection, collaboration and more. Now you might be wondering, Takiwa means place in Māori and it's also the name of the platform and the developers of the tool. Now while we think it's a perfect name for the tool itself, we're hoping that through this process we can come up with a really youth appropriate name which talks to the importance of the tool for our sector. We have brought the following publicly accessible data sets into Takiwa. These are New Zealand deprivation, the latest census data, data on the distribution of state housing, information about the location of schools and how well students are doing, information about voter enrolment and turnout in the last election, and information about our members from the Charities Register. Now it's important to note that all of the publicly accessible data had already been aggregated and managed to ensure that there was validity of data and anonymity and we haven't made any changes to the data that we've brought over. Another important thing to note about Takiwa is that it's a very powerful tool for comparing lots of different sets of data in one place and against a geographical map. But just because we see a relationship or what looks like a relationship between two separate sets of data in a particular place, it doesn't mean that we can generate causal links. What we're hoping that Takiwa does is provide a way for us to identify areas where things are working, maybe where they're not working, and to then go and find out more. Now I'm going to give you a tour of Takiwa. Now what I'm going to show you today is by no means the extent of what's possible, but it just gives you an idea of what you could do, and you can look at the same information in your local community, in your region, or nationally. For the purposes of this exercise, we're going to be in Christchurch, and I'm starting by showing you New Zealand deprivation. So this data is calculated using a number of the questions from the census data that are aggregated together, and then it's calculated in this instance at the census area unit. So that's a median number of 2,000 people. So when we look at the map of Christchurch, we can see that some areas are wealthier than others. If we look at the more mustardy colours, they're the poorer parts of the region and then we've got the other, other colours which are more wealthy. So we can immediately start to see some patterns. Now we're going to add in the Housing New Zealand data. So here we can see how state housing maps across Christchurch. And what's interesting about Christchurch is that the housing is spread all over the city, which is not true in other cities necessarily. And we can see still that there are certain pockets where there is very high density of state housing and there are other areas where there is less density. And here too we can see how that maps against deprivation because sometimes the housing is in a higher depth area and sometimes it's in a lower depth area. Now the cool thing about Takiwa is that we can keep adding on layers of data. So now I've added the distribution of schools in the Christchurch area. Now where you see a pin that tells that there's a single school and where you see a green circle that tells that there are multiple schools. If you zoomed in on one of those numbers you would then see the individual pins. So this is helpful to see how schools relate to where the location for example of has New Zealand houses and also how it relates to deprivation. Now I've added member organisations. These are represented by red pins 
and dark green circles where there's more than one organization in a specific area. So now we're able to look at how member organizations relate to schools and students and relate to housing New Zealand houses and to deprivation. It's important to note that at this stage we're only able to put one pen per organization which means that we can't capture organizations that work in multiple places in one community or in multiple cities or in multiple regions. That's what we're really looking forward to working with you next to, to make sure that we can adequately capture everywhere that people are working and create a really holistic picture of what service provision for young people looks like in Aotearoa. Now, once you get into a specific area and if you want to find out about an organization, you can click on that organization and find out more information. Or if it's a school, you can click on the school and you can find out about enrollment and contact details as well. One other thing you can do with the education layer is that you can look at how students are doing at specific schools and compare those to other schools. So here we've got the number of students with NCA level 3 or above by school in Christchurch. And if that wasn't enough, we can look at voter turnout and voter enrollment for the Māori electorate and the general electorate by electorate. And to show you how interesting this is, we can delve into how young people are voting in specific electorates. So here we've got 18 to 24 year old Māori on the general roll and we can see in Port Hills they're voting at a higher rate than the national average for young people. So what's cool about this section is that we can compare the percentage of young people that voted against the rest of the population within an electorate as well. And then we can compare that electorate to another electorate which may be quite close, as in the case of Port Hills and Christchurch East, or at a completely different part of the country and see what that tells us. It means that we can then go and look in those communities and see what is it that Port Hills is doing that isn't guaranteeing that a large number of young people are voting. The last layer I'm going to show you today is our member organisations. Now please bear in mind that this is at a fairly embryonic level and we are super keen for you to give us some more info so that we can bulk it out and rep truly represent all the work that we're doing. So while you can see that there are 48 organisations in the Wellington region, that doesn't do justice to any organisation which is based in Wellington with a national office and has sites across the country because we haven't mapped yet multi-sites. So we're really looking forward to hearing from you all who have more than one office or more than one service space to be able to get your info and map that across so that we can truly reflect the sector and all the work that we're doing. Like I mentioned before, you can click on an individual organisation and find out a little bit about them. All of this information is taken from the Charities Commission. So by the very nature of the diversity of our membership, not everyone will have all the detail because not everyone is a charity or registered with the Charities Commission. We're currently looking at developing some questions that we can ask each organization so that we can get some more useful information. And we would love to hear about what you would like to see in this space that would be useful to help you in working and collaborating with others. Now, after all that, I bet you you're keen to jump in and have a look around. So any Aratohi organisational member can jump in and have a look around. You just click on that link and log in. If you'd like to know more or you'd like to do a face-to-face -face or Skype tutorial, please get in touch with me. My email address is there. And once you've had a look, we'd love to know what you think. You can fill in the survey or you can flick me an email. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I hope now you'll be able to jump online and have a look around and that you'll find it as useful and as interesting as we are. We'd love to hear your thoughts. There's always room for improvement. And this is very much an early stage. So please do get in touch with any suggestions.